Sergio. Justin Thomas, PGA champion. Touchdown, Alabama, North Carolina. They're not going to be denied this time. Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, on a hot, muggy autumn day. As we take you down Broadway and the Honky Tonks, we go to the West End, where the tailgating's been going on for a long time, and the Commodore fans are believing and ready to anchor down for their undefeated team. But there's a whole lot of crimson that's rolled in from Tuscaloosa, about a three and a half hour drive straight north. And you come into Vanderbilt Stadium, the number one team in the country is visiting. But the Commodores, with that 3-0 start, their confidence level sky high right now. When you come to our house, we show you how to play some SEC ball. It don't matter where you're from, you're going to know what ball we play. Alabama, you're next. Oh, Nephi, lay loud, be careful what you ask for. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS, brings us into Vanderbilt Stadium in Asheville. And it's the Commodores getting ready to take on the number one team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama, who have won 21 in a row in this series. Can there be an upset today in Nashville? Boy, the stadium's packed with Crimson Tide fans, I can tell you that much. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Gary Danielson. So two teams that are 3-0 and and partner. The preliminaries are over. Now it's yeah. conference play, and that's a whole different animal. You know, there might have been a chance when Alabama looked at this game and said, you know, we might sleepwalk into this game, and Vanderbilt might not catch their best shot from Alabama. But after the talk and after the we want Alabama, <laughs> I think they're going to catch Alabama's best shot. But if you know if I'm Vandy, they've earned this. They've gone 3-0. and They've got a veteran team. And yeah, I came to the SEC to play the best, and they're going to get the best today. They're going to get the best. They've played pretty well in the offense so far this year. Kyle Schirmer, yeah. top in pass efficiency in the conference. They've got Ralph Webb, their all-time leading rusher. Problem with all those things is you're going against an Alabama defense. Yeah, and, and, you know, there's been a lot of injuries to that defense. They lost seven to the NFL on defense. Most of the injuries have been at linebacker. They're getting a lot of them back in this football game. So I think as the season goes along, you're going to see a better and better Alabama defense. Probably going to see a better and better quarterback, too, for Alabama. <laughs> He's pretty special. SEC Player of the Year on offense last year is going to get better this year. What they're trying to do with Jalen Hurts is to take it to the next level. Last year, they managed him through the ball to the outside of the formation. One look, and he would take off and run. Now, the next step is for Alabama to use all their weapons. When he steps up like this, throw it downfield. And then the last step is use all your weapons. Here's one to the tight end. Sorry, O.J. Howard, but that's going to happen maybe in the future a little bit more, but I think Jalen Hurts was good last year. He might be even better this year. You know, we're used to talking about Alabama having the top defense in the country. Statistically, it's Vanderbilt that's in a lot of categories, number one or number two. Well, you know, they've got a lot of great stats, and they've got a lot of veteran football players. They've earned those stats, but 10 of 11 of their players are juniors or seniors on this football team, and the stats are great, but the tape is just as good. They're just itching to play Alabama. They play very aggressive, man-to-man -man on the outside. They finished off a team last week with J.C. Hurts that is very similar in offensive style to Jalen Hurts. So they got a rhyme and a mere offense. I think going to this game with something they enjoy, I think, playing this team. We're going to enjoy it, too. Number one, Alabama and the Commodores of Andy on their home field. Get set for Jalen Hurts and company. We'll kick it off next. on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Aflac. GMC. And by Chick-fil-A. As they take the field, 0-7 all-time, though, against number one teams. And they've got number one Alabama today. And the Tide, as I mentioned, have won 21 straight in this series dating back to 1985. Allie LaForce, third member of our teams with the Vandy head coach. Coach, this is your moment. It's the big stage. You're playing the number one team in the country. You've said this is your most mature and experienced team yet. How do you expect that to translate when we kick this off? I told, I told these guys it's about the power of one. 
making sure one unit, one offense, one defense, one special teams, one play at a time. Let's go. Defense is your calling card. You're facing an Alabama team. They don't make a lot of mistakes. How do you crack them? You know what, for us, man, it's about doing just that. Not making a lot of mistakes and forcing them to make them. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. The last time Alabama lost here, I had just become a teenager, and Gary was trying to decide between Michigan and Purdue. <laughs> that just aged us a little bit. I'd like to take that shot over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's muggy, folks. It might be autumn, but it doesn't feel like it. And we have taken our blazers off immediately because our, shirt, our shirts are ruined at this point. Series history started in 1903. We talked about the winning streak. And the last Vanderbilt win was in 84. That was in... Tuscaloosa. Danny will receive. Alabama won the toss and defer. J.K. Scott will tee it up. Kalijah Lipscomb and C.J. Duncan, who will be in the wide receiving core most of the day for the Commodores, are the two guys back deep. The stadium is sold out, but... I think there might be more crimson here than there is black and gold. Here we go. Lipscomb will bring it from two yards deep. And he gets out to the 20-yard line, or very close, and that's where Vandy will go to work. As we take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and that brings out, first of all, our quarterback. We talked about him, Klaus Schirmer, really coming into his own. Brad, you think uh, Alabama's ready? And, and hearing a lot about this, Minka Fitzpatrick, top of your screen here. Watch him get up and just take out the guy to start the start the game. There's Kyle Shermer, 71% completion, eight touchdowns, no interceptions, and he scored twice on the ground, including a nifty one last week in their win over Kansas State. First down from the 20. Webb will flush out of the backfield and we'll have a flag to start things off. Play of game, offense number 14. Five yard penalty, remains first down. That's usually kind of hard to do on the first snap of the game. So they put themselves immediately behind the chains with a first and 15. Here's the rest of the starters up front for the Commodores, and Pinckney is a dangerous tight end. He's a matchup problem for a lot of teams. Here's Webb, and Ralph got about three. Alabama coming in has allowed only 80 yards rushing a game, and defensively, tide looks like this. What he talked about, Fitzpatrick, he's a good one back there. Eight career interceptions, he leads the defense in the secondary uh, and he is a physical football player I just wanted to point out their best player is on the kickoff team to start out and he starts out physical that's like Damian Harris blocking a punt exactly. last week starting running back so Shermer in the gun now it's second down and 12 over the middle got it complete and it's going to be a first down oh no now, across the, the 25 penalty. yeah because yeah. of the penalty it should have been you're right and you know, I think uh, Derek Mason has said exactly that. You know, we got to take care of our stuff. And when you make a mistake against the Alabama defense, you usually pay for it. And I think Kyle Shermer started out as a game manager. Okay, he was young as a freshman, played some. Sophomore, it was don't get us beat. But now he is a weapon and an asset. Let's see how good of a game he can play because he's going to have to play at the top of his game to upset Alabama. 43 percent of their third downs through the first three weeks of the season. Sherman's getting heat, throws it complete to Webb. He can make a man miss, but he's going to come up a yard shy. And it's Fitzpatrick and Avery there to make the stop. Yeah, what a play by both Pistol of them. Foul. Roughly the passer. Contact in the knee area on the defense. First down. 33. 15-yard penalty. So on a screen pass, you invite them in, and as you retreat, you can see the hit was just a little low. Um, let me rephrase that. A lot low. Kyle with that left knee braced, and it took a funny turn. 
when he was hit. So it's going to be a first down to move it out to well, the 44. Anthony Jennings, number 33, has been one of those injured linebackers, and he's been anxious to play. And oh, it been uh, really awkwardly, didn't it? Yeah. So a first down by penalty at the 44-yard line. Terry Blazing game is in the backfield. They fake the end around. Shermer deep on the middle, in and out, and into the hands of Alabama, intercepted by Ronnie Harrison. Jared Pinckney got his hand on it. It ricocheted to the Alabama defense. Well, an aggressive play call. Alabama's keeping two safeties deep, a play-action pass, and they cross Pinckney right across this play, and he is wide open. And a perfect throw right on the hands. You throw one of those, and you end up with an interception. Not a great start for Vandy. We'll see the Alabama offense after the interception when we return. Thirty-one straight games with at least one takeaway. Remember, they had 15 non-offensive touchdowns a year ago. And Kyle Shermer's first interception of the year, Gary. Well, it, it wasn't a non-offensive touchdown, so there's something bright to look at. I thought it was a great throw coming back on the play, too, as now Alabama gets the ball. We take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. It starts and sometimes ends with this guy, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he, he is so composed. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I've seen a player with as much pressure on him. I mean, at Alabama, right, you only got to win them all. Yeah. <laughs> and you're the quarterback. He's only lost one. That's right. <laughs> and that came down to the last second. So they start at the 32-yard line. Damian Harris, the tailback behind Hurts. And he'll get the call. And a nice run to pick up about four. We take a look at the rest of the Tide offense. The guy that's climbing the charts in their all-time receiving categories, top five and just about everything right now, Calvin Ridley. Comes in with 15 catches. And catches this one. So that's 16 on the year. Well, I was really curious to see if Alabama would go up tempo in this football game. It's hot. They think they've got more good players than the other team. I would not be surprised they don't go up tempo. Charles Wright leads the SEC in sacks with six. First down, Alabama. They are going tempo at the 46 yard line. Harris dragging Commodores with him. Got it out and into Commodore territory at 48. The big goal for the offense this year is use all your weapons. We're going to run the ball more with our running backs. We're going to try to get the ball to our tight ends. They want to spread the ball around. They want it to be more like maybe three or four or five years ago than the last couple. Damian got six on that one. He'll take it again, and he's got a first down and a bunch more. And again, drags two would-be tacklers with him. Down to the 36-yard line. They look for guys to make big plays earlier. Jonah Williams, number 73 that time, comes around and makes the big block. You pull the tackle around. He was right tackle a year ago, as you look at Brian Dable right there, the new offensive coordinator. They quickly moved it out to the interception to the 36, and now here goes Hertz. And he got about four. Emmanuel Smith made the tackle. Brian Dable, of course, hired off the New England Patriots staff, was once a graduate assistant for Nick Saban at Michigan State, and going to bring more of a package of trying to spread the ball around. That's the goal. Play action. Hurts pressured and going down. Great pressure off the edge on the cornerback blitz by Trey Herndon. Great job by Oren Burks, number 20 that time, taking the running back out from the backfield. They're going to try to run a wheel route. Good coverage right here to get him and stay with him. That was the trick play, and Burks is right on him. Josh Jacobs never got a hand on him. He could have been the guy to pick up that corner blitz, but missed him by a mile. Yeah, it's always a combination. The guy he was going to go to, not there, and forced the sack. So it's third down and long. And it hurts. Empty backfield on third and 15. What a mistake by Vanderbilt to miss the line, but they're going to get away with it. Yes, they are. He only got a yard. Charles Wright, the guy we highlighted in the defense for the Commodores, makes the stop. 
You know, sometimes you think maybe this Vanderbilt defense is smallish guys. You know, you think all these little guys, he's 6'3", 240. Yeah. I mean, you know, he is a rushing monster here, makes the play, comes off the edge, and makes it. J.K. Scott, one of the better punters around in the kick. Kalijah Lipscomb is waiting back at the 10-yard line on the other end of that shot. He did a mile in the air, end over end. Lipscomb's just going to get out of the way, and this is going to roll out of bounds near the five. Great kick. Does his job. His ninth punt this year inside the 20, and in this case, at about the four-yard line. Always good to have great specialists. J.C. Scott is one of those for Alabama. Vandy in deep territory on offense when we come back. Tomorrow we've got a doubleheader that's kind of a tripleheader. Ravens and Jaguars in London in the local CBS markets. And then J.J. Watt and the Texans take on Brady and the Patriots. Later the Bengals look for their first win against the Packers. And the day will kick off as always. J.B., Phil, Coach, Nate, and Boomer on the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines starts 12 Eastern on CBS. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce, and our CBS crew back in Nashville at Vanderbilt Stadium where that kick went out of bounds at the four. So Kyle Shermer and the offense are going to be lining up his tailback. It's going to be about five yards deep in the end zone. Already a change at right guard in this game. Number 75 is in there at right guard. An eye formation. Webb. I don't know he got to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Bradley Grenier, number 75, is already in the game. He ended up last week playing the last drive, so it's one of those things they're mixing and matching up front. It was a deal the last couple of years where the skill position players for Vanderbilt weren't experienced, but the line was, and now it's kind of flipped around the other way. Yes. 17 of 22 starters are juniors or seniors, so even though it's a bad start, two things good. Their quarterback's not injured, and they've got a lot of veterans on the team. They should be able to handle this. See how to handle second down and nine. Shermer and the shotgun standing on his own goal line. Looked like motion. False start. Ken Williamson's our Start referee. Snap. False start. Offense, number 83. Half the distance to the goal. Remain second down. They call on Nathan Marcus, the tight end. Yeah, they're taking turns making mistakes. That's a bad scene. You yeah. know, it's, it's always that way. You know, you, you play against a couple of teams you're comfortable with, and now you look out there and you see that Bama uniform, and you go, all right, I got to get off. I got to get off. I got to be quick. <laughs> and you didn't send those uh, self-inflicted wounds. Now they really got to be careful because they're just outside the two-yard line. If it's a pass, you don't want to have a safety or a holding call on second down and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Blasting game gets it out across the five. Yeah, and you run up the middle. You run maybe at their best impact player, De'Ron Plain, number 794. He is almost, De'Ron Plain is almost unblockable. That's what we were talking about coming in. Fourth in the conference, eighth in the country, and allowing only 80 yards a game. Ralph Webb so used to getting 100-yard games in his career. The question is, who's going to be the edge rushers a year ago it was Anderson and Williams who's going to make those edge plays to get that quarterback out of the pocket third down at eight Schirmer in his own end zone screen pass and blasting game fell down and lost the ball all in one motion so they're going to have to punt from deep in their own territory So this is eventually going to put a lot of pressure on that Vanderbilt defense. You go four and out, now you go three and out. Similar to Kansas State in the first week, but does Kansas State and Alabama have the same firepower on offense? No. No. Similar styles, but not same firepower. Sam Loy is almost standing at his own end line. Alabama bringing a little bit of heat. Nice punt. Really nice punt. Backing up Trayvon Diggs to his own 41. Made the first two miss. Back into Commodore territory at the 47-yard line. A 52-yard kick and an 11-yard return. 7.46 remaining first quarter.
Adam Zucker in New York with this Ford update. For the third time in five years, the Southwest Classic went to overtime. Jerry Jones watching. AM goes first. Kellen Mond, the freshman, to Christian Kirk, his third touchdown of the game. Arkansas has got to answer. Third down, Austin Allen intercepted by Armani Watts to end the game 50 to 43. Kevin Sumlin now 5 0 against Brett Bielema as we go back to Bama Vandy. Wow, another thriller between those two. Here, no score. Alabama in Vanderbilt territory for the second time. They start at the Commodores 47. Safety's very deep for Vanderbilt. Trying to help those corners. A lot of man-to-man -man coverage for this Vanderbilt team. Bo Scarborough in the backfield for the first time for Alabama. A quick throw over the middle. And a first down throw. Irv Smith picks up 11. That's exactly the goal in the next step of the process for this Alabama football team. Are they willing to throw on first down and are they willing to take the check downs, take the easy throws and force that defense more in the middle of the field in the passing game. So first down at the 36. Hurts to throw again. Wants a long ball down the sideline just over the arms of Robert Foster. Foster had a half step back there. So you want to watch a maul against a supposed pass rush for Vanderbilt? Watch this offensive line on this play. They slide down and maul him and build a wall. There's no one within six yards of Jalen Hurts on that throw. Brings up second down and 10. Scarborough's yet to touch it. And he'll move out of the backfield. Hurts is going to go the other way. And on a With deflection. deflection. <laughs> oh and a catch goodness. by Cam Sims. Devontae Smith got a hand on it. Sims ended up with it. Well, that's the second play in this game that Vanderbilt did a great job on defense. This time it's Arnold Tarpley, number two. Comes up, takes on the hit. It bounces off. And it's a good thing Trey Herndon made the tackle there because that almost and could have been a walk-in. So good fortune has the tide at the 25 with another first down. Scalbro off to the races. Hit, bounces off inside the 10. First and goal, Alabama. What a run. Pickup of 19. Man, hardly even looks like Bo Scarborough. He's lost so much weight. He looks so thin and mm. streamlined this year, but he's just as powerful, yeah, isn't exactly. he? Exactly. Running left. That's been kind of the formula for Alabama for a long time. And this time they're running left towards number 73, and he did the job there. First and goal at the six. Low snap. Scarborough is going to walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. When I saw Bo try to quiet the crowd down, he's quieting the Alabama crowd. It's three quarters Alabama. Right. Low snap, hands it off. They had the right play on, bounces it outside, and there's no tackling that guy. Second rushing touchdown of the year for Scarborough. And Alabama strikes first. Papanastas in for the point after. As you saw that sea of crimson here at Vanderbilt Stadium. Extra point is good. You know, that's about the same as before the game. More people said roll tide to me than anchor down. <laughs> right now, the tide's got the lead. 47 yards in five plays. Scarborough has made it 7 nothing. And now, two projects smarter presented by Home Depot. Here. Yeah, it, you know, when you run left, Scarborough may be good, but you also have to have those big guys in front. And watch the hook blocks right here. Three guys, they all wall off, they all do their job, and that's why Scarborough could sneak through. Blocking smarter, and that's yeah, smart that's right. running right there. Williams, here's Baker, and get it in the second level, then one play later, you're just able to walk in. Bradley Bozeman, the center, the reach, the block at the point of the attack, and as Brad said, it's smart to put that guy in any time. Yep, second touchdown for him. There's the big eaters over on the sideline, trying to cool off on a hot day in Nashville. First time the Commodores have trailed this year. In fact, 
At the end of first quarters, they've led 35 to nothing, and at the half, 63 to seven. So a different spot for him. Lipscomb from just outside the goal line, and he's in trouble right now. Maybe got to the 14 and swarmed under by the special teams of Alabama. Tomorrow on CBS, whole new trek begins. You don't want to miss the world premiere of Star Trek Discovery right after the season premiere of 60 Minutes. Only CBS and CBS All Access. Well, so far, it's been a tough spot for Carl Shermer and company, although after that personal foul on a low hit, they did move it out to about the 44-yard line. But since then, they've been starting inside their own 15. Well, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt here that you know, this is a pretty big stage, and one team is used to this big stage playing in these games. This is something new, and this seems like a little bit of a tight football team to me for Vanderbilt. Two illegal procedure penalties, a drop ball, and, you know, one lucky play for Alabama, and then they pounded it on him. Here comes a corner blitz. Picked up nicely. Shermer's got to get rid of it, though, and it's incomplete. Let's check in with Ali. Guys, Shermer could not be more unfazed by the slow start to this game. He is very calm, but the offensive line, on the other hand, they are intense. They are being vocal. They are communicating, working through the problems, and it starts with Bruno Reagan, who slapped his knee, commanded the attention of the offensive line, says, guys, we have to be better. And Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday, he said our biggest challenge is protecting our quarterback, making sure he can get to that second read. That's something they're working on. They'd only given up two sacks so far through three games. And that's all you, about you get as a quarterback against Alabama is one two you go to three it's tough they blitzed off the corner last time and now Webb found a little opening and Ralph Webb the all-time leading rusher in Vanderbilt history is over 3,500 yards in his career now with that run and he's fired up and a great block on the edge that time tight end comes in motion and gets a really nice block and Webb you can see his quick feet He's had nearly 800 attempts, rush attempts, in the SEC. Hasn't got off to the great start, but you see the potential. They're down at about a foot. And they get the foot and then some. Blasting game. First down, Vanderbilt. Rashawn Evans in on the stop. Andy Ludwig, as Allie was telling me, the offensive coordinator of Vanderbilt is a 20-year veteran as an offensive coordinator. He knows you cannot panic against Alabama. They want to slow this pace down. They want to get this into a fourth quarter game and see what they got. You said to him yesterday, would you take about 65 plays? And that what you exactly. said? He said yes. exactly. I'll take it right now. And again, Kyle Schirmer in the gun at the five minute mark of the first quarter. Looking to throw, now looking to run. Nobody open, has to get what he can. And he got back near the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, the formula usually is if you're going to give problems to the Alabama defense, your quarterback at least has to have the threat of the running attack. So let's see if Kyle Shermer can be good enough and efficient enough as a quarterback to be able to move the ball without the threat of that running quarterback. He's got two good senior wide receivers in Trent Sherfield and C.J. Duncan. Right, both veterans play a lot of football. And now he's got Ralph Webb back behind him. Alabama's taking no chances. They are keeping their safeties back. They think their front can stop no matter what they got. It's the third screen of the game, isn't it? And I, that one was taken out from Webb's feet before he ever got a chance. Sean Dion Hamilton. Coming into today, we talk about Ralph Webb. A lot of people don't know who he is. Look at the numbers entering today. Right there with Nick Chubb and some other big name Running backs. Well, now get, get a load of this. I mean, he's rushed each year for over 200 attempts each year. 212, yeah. 277, and 250. So he is used to carrying the rock. Today he's got one good run, but as we said, coming in has struggled at times. And he split out as a wide receiver this time on third down and ten. Empty backfield. Everybody moving. Was it Alabama or was it Vanderbilt? Everybody's pointing at each other. The only voice that really matters is Ken Williams. And the headlinesman and the umpire and the line judge. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, boys? What do you got? Offside <laughs> by contact. Defense number 94. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. So, was there any flinch up front?
I didn't see anything. It was, looks like it was the center's movement with his head that they moved on, and that's almost every snap in tape. That's exactly what they do to time out the snap. So it gives them a chance here, a little better chance. Third down and five. Two tight end set, which they use more than 50% of the time. Alabama's going to blitz unless there's another offside. This one's blown dead. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 80. Five yard penalty. And then third down. And that's the tight end. Jared Pinckney, so we go right back to where and we started. he was started. right in front of Deshaun Hand, number nine, that time. Let's see if we can look at this again. We getting any movement there? There he is right there. Let's see if he moves at all. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. just a little bit. Hey. You can see him flinch. It's nice that you can blow that thing up. We can oh, see those. Oh, yeah, things. that's new tools. You just keep adding. Boy, am I getting your you 20? Are, just think what you, I'll have in your 20. You are so babied over there. <laughs> Third down and 10. Three wide outs to the top for Shermer. A stunt on the front for Alabama. The pass is incomplete. Looking for a flag is Caleb Scott. He doesn't get one. Yeah. And at that time, Kyle Shermer had to let it go. He had to pick out a spot or he was going to get hit. Hootie Jones made the play, but Mac Wilson and Deshaun Hand put the pressure. And you could see Kyle Shermer that time says, I got to pick out a spot and let it go. And that's how you get those interceptions. From experience, I'm going to tell you, that's how you get those interceptions. <laughs> Sam Lloyd, a kick. The last rugby was barely returnable. Let's see if we can do it again and duplicate it. Another nice kick. Yep. Trayvon Diggs calls fair catch and takes it right at the 30 yard line. You can get the CBS Sports app. For the fastest scores and inside access to Alabama, Vanderbilt, and all your favorite teams, download the CBS Sports app today. And you get a look at Vanderbilt Stadium in Nashville. Alabama coming in as the number one team in the country. They've come in as the number one team in the country a million times, it seems. And there's the rest of the top ten. Nick Saban, he's been here before. Amazing, amazing record. 47 wins. Yep. And Alabama's he doesn't get upset. Uh, you know, I don't remember since 2008 that he's been beaten by an on-ranked team. Here's a swing pass out to Damian Harris, and Harris going to be close to a first down. I think the closest was South Carolina in 2010. They beat him, and I think they were 18 or 19th ranks. <laughs> Alabama lines up quickly on a second and one. Harris this time as a runner and he cuts it outside Damian Harris can they catch him inside the 30 forget about it Harris touchdown 61 yards He showed his strength earlier. Now he shows his speed. Watch him pick his way through this. He's supposed to follow Pierce Baker number 71, but he cuts it back. Then watch him look back right here. What do I got? He knew he had a race, and he took it to the end zone. Damien Harris is one good football player. I'll tell you that. That play, or that drive, I should say, didn't last very long. 36 seconds in two plays. Your point is good. And with 332 remaining in the quarter, Alabama with a two touchdown lead already. One of the trademarks for a Derek Mason defense is a lot of movement on the defensive line. They really were stunting around, made a pile, but Damian Harris read it so well and broke out to the outside. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year from 61 yards away, 14 nothing tied. Three thirty two remaining in the quarter Crimson Tide with a 14 nothing lead courtesy of Harris Damien's fourth touchdown of the year getting a little oxygen over there after a 61 yard touchdown run. Yeah you get a handful of uh, both Scarborough then a little Damien Harris and then when they want to rest him they bring in a five star recruit in Najee <laughs> Harris right. Yeah pretty deep. Scott's kick. Lipscomb is about five yards deep. This time he'll take a knee. 
give you another look at that Damian Harris touchdown. Here's what our blimp guys were looking at. Yeah. 61 yards from a mile high, right? <laughs> It's just as pretty whatever angle you shoot it from. Yep. So now the Commodores are going to come out in a two touchdown hole. And Kyle Shermer is only two out of seven for 11 yards and an interception that really wasn't his fault. Ricocheted off the receiver's hands and into Riley Harrison's hands for Alabama. First three games, 13 points. Today, 14. So, so much for that 4.3 points a game that was leading the country. Straight ahead. Oh, and the ball came the ball. out, I, I think. he did. Alabama says they have oh, it, man. and they do. Deshaun Hand got both hands on it. And yeah, Kari Blasic game that time gives... Ralph Webb a little bit of a break. Very simple play. Run the ball right up the middle. Hands right here. Let's see if he gets his hand on and he reaches out. And oh, I think it was Keith Holcomb, number 42, that might have got the last hit on it. Don't know for sure. Here's the thing that it does appear to be. Is it Holcomb or no from behind that time? It was Anthony Jennings, number 33, that got the hand on it from the side. Is the stage too big, Brad, for Vanderbilt, or is Alabama too big for Vanderbilt? We're going to find out in the next three quarters, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. So a two-touchdown advantage in great field position after the fumble recovery. And now it's Bo Scarborough. And nobody can bring down either of the tailbacks for the Tide right now. I I'll tell you, if you're an Alabama fan, you're saying, oh my gosh, this is what we've been begging for. Run the ball, give it to our backs, use the play action pass, get all those big guys up front blocking, and let's be able to, when we need run the ball, run the ball. That time Irv Smith, number 82, the tight end, just collapsed his man right past the running back. And now Oren Burks, one of the key players for Vanderbilt's defense, one of their captains that we talked to yesterday, down after trying to make that tackle. We'll check on him when we come back. Oren Burks walking off under his own power going into the tent, and I don't know how he walked off, Gary, after I, this. I, we were thinking this might be too gruesome to show, okay? How does he survive this? Oh. Looks like he breaks his leg. Uh, we're, we're debating, like, oh, we don't want to show that. And he gets up and walks off the field. Holy cow. We spent about half an hour with him yesterday. What a great young man, and we hope he's okay. In the meantime, Alabama on the roll again at the 12-yard line. The two touchdown lead looking to add to it. Jalen Hurts, it's a run all the way. Follows his tailback, still going. Down around the six. And we're going to mix it up a little bit after the play. Mix it a little bit more than a little bit after the play. No flags yet. Well, a little frustration on the Vanderbilt part, I'm sure. Jalen Hurts is a fantastic runner and a really tough threat for any defense. But I think Alabama feels he's got too much of the offense on his shoulders or legs. So far in this season, he's got 43% of the rush yards. That's got to get smaller, I think, as the season yep. goes on. And they look to what Alabama's going to be to beat, you know, the Clemsons, the Oklahomas, the top of that, that food chain of uh, talent. Second down at four. They can get a first down at around the two-yard line. Hurts wants to throw. Fires at end zone. Drops Jeez. by Calvin Ridley. That doesn't happen very often. Well, you know, what might have happened is Calvin Ridley was open for about four seconds. <laughs> Couldn't wait for it to get there, He right? beat Ryan White so cleanly. was open so long. The ball was slightly behind. But and not a perfect spiral. But certainly but, Ridley catch it. Yeah, point. I'm telling you what, Mrs. Danielson would have expected my receiver to catch that ball. <laughs> Third down and four. <laughs> right? Yes. He's tough on those receivers. Uh huh. Thinking about a safety blitz. Vanderbilt, be careful. Hurts fires it. Yeah. That's going to be pass interference on Trey Herndon. Trey Herndon, the. Three-year player 
Just a little bit too much panic. He's got inside technique, and he allows Ridley to get across his face. Hooked him with that back arm. Yep, he's got inside technique. The one place you can't get beat is inside, and he knows Pass it right interference. away. interference, defense number 31. The penalty will place the ball at the three-yard line. Automatic first down. Well, we knew coming in that Vanderbilt would have to play a near-perfect game to upset the number one team. They're not playing a near-perfect game right now. Horizon red zone, that's what Alabama has done so far this year. And they're very close to the end zone right now, just outside the two. Scarborough, nice job that time by the Vandy defense, closing the door and stopping them at the line of scrimmage. Darius Wiley, one of the first guys there, off the bottom of the pile. Uh, any kind of stand here to force a field goal would be great for Vanderbilt. Bama already with 123 yards on the ground. Gary was talking about Hurts. Came in with almost twice as many rushing yards as the next guy, and that would have been Damian Harris. Of course, Damian Harris had it 61 yards to that total already in the first quarter. Yeah, inside, Knifey Lalo is the guy that you got to watch. That matchup inside. And again, Vandy does a good job. But they're closing in. It's going to be third down and goal. Can they stop him one more time? Knifey Layla is the guy who had the challenge to Bama. Yeah. A little bit of a high voice, but a low center of gravity. <laughs> you saw him at our open. Let's see if he can make another stop in here. Third down and goal. Big split to the left. Look at that odd split over there. Oh, Harris touchdown for the second time. Bit of an odd look by Alabama. Must have been a NFL look for Brian Dable, but run to the right. And, and Deron, Deron and, Payne is one of the lead blockers. Yes, that's help. that jumbo jumbo, isn't it? Yep. So already 85 yards on the ground for Harris. Papanastas in for the point after. Up and good. It all started with a fumble recovery by Deshaun Hand, and then they only had to go 26 yards in six plays. Damian Harris did the final honors from two yards out. Alabama took a short field and scored from two yards out, 21 to nothing. J.K. Scott's already been a busy kicker. One won't be returnable. Again, Oren Burks went down earlier with an injury. Kind of a gruesome looking play, but apparently he's. Well, well, let's check with Allie and see if he's okay. Yeah, guys, Oren Burks is still in the tent. I saw them working on his ankle a lot, but then they did put a knee brace on his left knee. He had an injury on the left knee in the past. It could be a reoccurring injury that's flaring up. They do expect him to return. I was able to see his face. He wasn't grimacing. He didn't look like he was in a lot of pain. They're just trying to get him back out there. Now he's really vital. He makes a lot of the play calls. He plays that sort of star position, which is kind of a cross between a strong safety and a linebacker. Yeah, he's playing that Zach Cunningham position. Yeah, right. Here go, led the conference in tackles. It doesn't help when you're starting at your own 15 all the time, but this time Vanderbilt has better field position. Sherman. That one is a little wobbly, but it was catchable, and it's incomplete. Well, Derek Mason was so ready and proud of his football team. He's worked four years to get to this spot. What happens in the four, first quarter? Four penalties, two drop balls, and two turnovers. That's how you get to 21-0. Yep. And now it's going to have to be the cool of Kyle Shermer here to try to get something going in this first half offensively. Dallas Rivers in the backfield for the first time. Now this is Ralph Webb trying to follow Rivers. You know, that's Alabama. It's like a couple of yards here, a couple of yards there, and that's about it. 
Well, we talked about the miscues, some of it self-inflicted. That one, Amy gets the recipient of it. This time, they're just kind of following around on a screen pass, and then Alabama forces that turnover right there, Anthony. Uh, Penny right, Jennings, excuse me, right there, forces it, and then the power of the Alabama football team takes over. See if they have one more play before the end of this quarter. Nope. That'll do it. The third down and long will be coming up on the other end of the field. We played one, and it was all number one. Crimson Tide with a 21 to nothing lead here on the road. We'll return to Nashville after this message and a word from your local station. Orrin Burks heading to the locker room and Allie reporting to us that he is going to be back. He's walking pretty well considering his ankle and knee and the the roll up he suffered on that tackle. Meanwhile his teammates start the second quarter down 21 and with a third down and eight. <laughs> Alabama might have jumped unless they were drawn offside. Motion came from the top of the screen. And I think it's going to go against the tide which would make the third down a little more manageable. Offside, defense number 33. The movement by the defense caused the offense to react. Five yard penalty, still third down. And we've had three or four of those already that have gone in different ways. First four possessions, interception, punt, punt, fumble. Not good. And not enough plays. That's a big part of yeah. it right there. That defense will not hold up. Now let's see if they can pick up the third down. Came in. Maybe I should rephrase that. Will not and has not. Not so, not so far. <laughs> but third down at three is a lot better. Three wide outs for Shermer. Alabama looking like they might blitz. Shermer has time over the middle. Incomplete broken up. Pinkney was the intended receiver and they're going to have to punt again. Brad Nessler, Gary Daniels, now the force and our CBS crew. Well, the bright lights for Vanderbilt have been too bright so far. Remember in the uh, Dirty Dozen movie when Lee Marvin goes out there and they won't shave and they're mad at him and he walks back in and he goes, yes. Yes. I think when Vanderbilt called out Alabama, Nick Saban went, yes. <laughs> I thought you were Our guys do, are going to be ready. I thought you were going to do a Dirty Dozen and say we need Jim Brown in here <laughs> to play well, for Vanderbilt. Well, that'd be good too. I mean, you know. <laughs> I think when they called out Alabama, Nick knew he could get his team ready for this game. So punting situation coming up. Too many punts today so far for the Australian punter, Loy. Fair catch taken. <laughs> and, ironi Diggs. and ironically, Brad, too many punts and not enough punts. <laughs> Two exactly. of them have been turnovers. Depends on who you're cheering for. That's the longest running rivalry in NFL history. Chicago Bears head into Lambeau to take on the Green Bay Packers. Light the night up with Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. Bears, I guess, are sticking with Mike Glennon. Yes. A lot of chatter about Mitch Trubisky, who you and I, Ali, saw in the uh, Sun, Bowl. Sun Bowl last year. I think, we, I think we probably made him some money in that game. Well, he did better than we did, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Alabama has yet to throw a deep pass. This time they got one receiver, one defender deep. Will they eventually go play action pass and go deep? This guy's going deep a couple times. He might go again. Harris spins his way for a dozen. Ryan White made the tackle, and Damian Harris is closing in on a 100-yard day already, and we just played a quarter. And Ryan White making the first hit on the play, coming from the secondary a long way away. Cut back, good tackle, but a first down. Jalen Hurts, this might be the one Gary's talking about. No, he goes over the middle, and it's going to be another first down. It appears to Jerry Judy. Judy, a freshman who they are high on. You know, and this looks so different for this Alabama offense. The willingness to throw the ball over the middle. It's been a perimeter behind the line of scrimmage type passing attack. You can see the growth in the Alabama passing game. Boy, good job by Ladarius Wiley to hit the thigh of Damian Harris, or he might have had another, had another big gainer there. Again, the safety is a guy coming up, making the play, and getting into that end secondary almost almost every play on the run. Comes a blitz. It almost got to Hurts, but he still throw. delivers. What a throw is right. What a throw. Calvin Ridley with a catch. You want to see some talent right here? 
I mean, we all knew what he could do. Running the ball, he has a big arm. But this throw, he can feel it, he jumps, he actually jumps and throws that ball out there right on it. Another first down, and now uh, whistles. False start, offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. Remains down. That one's on Matt Womack, the right tackle, but let's take a look at the running back comparison so far today. Damian Harris over 100, and we've played just a little over a quarter and two touchdowns, and then Scarborough comes in, averages 10 a carry and a touchdown, and as Gary said, they could go to Josh Jacobs, they could go to Najee Harris. Right, and, and, and we talked to Coach Saban about that yesterday, and he said, you know, we will use them all, and we encourage them to put something good on tape. The NFL will find you, believe me. First and 15. Scarborough, big opening off the right side. You know, he's thinned down like Eddie Lacy thinned down, right? I mean, he looks like a different guy. There's a lot of people, maybe me included, that think that Alabama does not lose that national championship game if Bo Scarborough right. doesn't get hurt. But taking nothing away from Clemson, they were a pretty darn good team. Bo went out, game ending injury in the third quarter of that national championship game. Here comes Andrew around to Calvin Ridley. Got a blocker in front of his tight end. Gave him a good shot. Nice open field tackle, though, by Jawan Williams. He did get it to the 29-yard line. Yeah, Jawan Williams is one of the younger players on this defense. We talk about all the juniors and seniors, but Williams is just a true sophomore. Big, tall corner, runs well. Highly recruited four-star player that Derek Mason brought in here to Vanderbilt. He says size-wise, he reminds him of Richard Sherman when he coached him at Stanford. Extra tackle in the game, Jarek Willis, number 74. We might have 12 guys out there. And Alabama will take a timeout. Yeah, they might have 12, they might have more than 12, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and that doesn't make Nick Saban all that happy. Timeout taken, Alabama driving, though, again, when we come back. Tonight coming up, 7 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Number 22, San Diego State. How good has the Aztecs been this year already? Try to protect their perfect record. They'll take aim at Air Force on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Ben Holden, Eric Taylor, and Jenny Dell are going to bring you that one, 7 o'clock Eastern time tonight. 21 to nothing, Alabama here. Had to take a timeout. There's the cards on the sideline. Yeah, they call the formation or motions or whatever, and that's, I think, that's a lot of cards. That's, that's they are a lot stacked. of cards. Yep. Yeah. That's more cards than we got up here with George Hill, our <laughs> stat guy, Clint Dean, our spotter. Dave over there with your stuff. Yeah, my a lot stuff. Of cards. Yep. We got a lot of cards, but that's a. If you don't look over, Coach Nick's going to get a little upset. <laughs> Third down and one coming up. Brian Robinson and Bo Scarborough both in the backfield. Jalen Hurts under center. With Ridley in motion, play fake. Hurts hesitates and now trying to head to the sticks himself. Lost the ball. It backwards. I don't think he made it, did he? Whoa. It's really close. Really close. I don't know if the fumble landed out of bounds. Caleb Peart is the guy that made the stop. I'll tell you, Juwan, Jojo Juan Williams, number eight, had great coverage there. And as he cuts back, the ball pops out and see if it lands out of bounds. It does. Jordan Griffin, number 40 right there, pointing the other way for Vanderbilt. He made the hit. The ball came out. And so it's fourth down, and they're going to look at this, I think, to make sure they've got the right spot. I think we're going to have to go to the booth and take a look at this one. Eric Mason chatting with the officials, including Ken Williamson, the referee. Al Ford is our in-stadium replay official. Of course, he gets a lot of support back from Early Birmingham. The, field, the ball was short of the first down spot. The previous play is under review. The yeah, review is initiated by the replay booth. I think the ball should be right at the blue line right I there. I too, which would be fourth and one. Yep. Here's another angle from up top. Since uh, golf's ended, our our, beat, our blimp guys really really bored up there, you know. <laughs> Again, the hit 
And the ball. Let's see if we can get even a closer look at it right here. Zoom way in. That's as good as, good as I can do with my zoom. Let's take see where the ball goes. That's the eye test right there. I think it's fourth and I think it's fourth of the yard, yeah. Yeah. Falls on the 29 yard line, right? I Should think. be. I think they pretty much had it, except I think it's got to come back a little bit. And when Alabama does get back at the line of scrimmage, they brought a third tackle in the game. Jedrick After Willis, number review, 74. The runner's been ruled out at the 29 yard line where it will be fourth down. Yep. There we go. They got it right. Yep. Perfect. That's why we do it every week. Al and I are in sync up here. You really are. I saw <laughs> you guys in. talking before right. the game. Yeah. Here's what's going to happen, Gary. If the ball <laughs> goes out on a fumble, it's at the 29. Matt Womack has slid out to tight end, and they brought in another tackle. Frederick Williams, number 73. Well, this would be a huge stop for Vanderbilt's defense. Fourth and a yard. Scarborough, he got it rather easily. Needed one, and he got almost three. Let's look behind Bo and what he's looking at. I can tell you right now that Nick Saban is loving watching this. Pierce Baker, number 71, pulled around, stepped around, led the play, being able to get those short yardage plays without having to run your quarterback every time. Already the Commodores without Oren Burks, one of their captains, and now Charles Wright, who leads the team in sacks. And tackles for loss, and he's down. Boy, they can't lose many more guys like them. 21 0 Alabama. We'll be right back. The Commodores' defense wasn't planning on going camping that much today. They're using that yeah. tent a little more than they had hoped. Here's Not a good sign. Charles Wright on this last play. Here's the injured player, but his own player, Darius uh, Wiley, number five, is the guy who runs into him, comes off of a block. And off the tackle, it spins right into Charles Wright. So there's some friendly fire there. And he's trying to walk it off. As we said, arguably two of their best players, Burks and Wright, the two linebackers, both injured here in the first half. Alabama's had plenty of time with the injury after picking up the fourth down conversion to rest over there on the sideline. And now they've got a first down just outside the Vandy 26. Averaging almost eight yards a play. We haven't even seen a Jalen Hurts run. Not a big run today. His tailbacks have done most of the damage. Josh Jacobs is in there. That's the third tailback. Alabama's first down has been very good. Hurts. Gets away from the rush. Now he's going to rush it himself. Great comeback clock that time. Josh Jacobs, the running back, comes back and peels for his quarterback. Here's what Gary is talking about. Josh Jacobs finally gets out there to watch him peel back and clean it up that time. Mm -hmm. Caleb Pert, number nine, is the recipient of that peel back block. So first down run by Hertz has them in the red zone again at the 15 yard line with a three touchdown lead already. Three wide outs down to the bottom of your screen. The run's going to be for Jacobs though. After that good block he gets a little sugar he picks up two. Daniel Smith in on the stop. And you saw that first down success by Alabama sometimes you get so looking at the stats on third down you forget first down creates those mm -hmm. third down and Alabama's had such great success in this game on first down they've just been dominating the game 173 yards on the ground we still got a long ways to go in the second quarter they fake the end around they go straight up the middle with Jacobs he's near the seven Smith another tackle from his inside linebacker spot. Hey, Filelo. Filelo number 77. He's got Bradley Bozum on him. And uh, Bozum is kind of used to a big nose tackle. Remember in the opening game against Florida State, he had Derek Nottie number, big, big guy from Florida State. You know, another big guy. When you're going to play center, 
In the SEC, you get a lot of those big guys. Layla better get down to the stance right now. Third down and three. Oh. And he just shoved the there center. You go. <laughs> and Bozeman says, we'll take that. Offside, by contact, defense number 77. Half the business to the goal. First down. Well, nice Nephi Lalo is a good football player, but Lalo is can be at his match here. Bozeman's yep. ready for him. So they're going to spot it at the four-yard line. Hey, you got the same thing? Doesn't seem in this football game so far that there's been one play that the defense has made. Have they made one difference-making play in the game? No. Scarborough, the tailback, comes up to have a word with his quarterback. Jalen Hurts and this pistol set will give it to Scarborough. Diving forward around the two. Ryan White hit him low and got him off his pins. It'll be second down a goal. Right, Ryan White is a courageous football player, I'll tell you that. Three-time captain. That hasn't yep. happened since Jay Cutler was around here. Quick snap. Scarborough walking in. Touchdown, Alabama. So now Harris has two. Scarborough has two. Well, this time it was Lester Cotton, number 66. It's going to pull around right here and get the block. Watch him pull out. Follow it. There's the crease. That's all you need. Kind of feeling this offensive line for Alabama is going to get a lot of love after this game, don't you? So far, so good. Yep. Andy Papanastas in to attempt the point after. And just inside the left upright on that one. So the tailbacks following the big eaters. And for the second time today, Scarborough in the end zone. 75-yard drive, 13 plays. He scores from two yards out. Shot of Vanderbilt from up high. And Vanderbilt Stadium. Premier Monday on CBS. Best night of comedy begins with the premiere of the Big Bang Theory. Young Sheldon, Kevin Can Wait, and me, myself, and I. It all starts Monday at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS. Well, we talked about two or three or four running backs. The first two are doing great. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get on the field with those guys who are healthy and can run like that, isn't it? Yeah. And, and they're pretty good receivers as well. And uh, these are not just straight-ahead runners. These are guys that make you miss, and they can, they can run. And that I, I'm impressed with that offensive line for Alabama. You know, it's been a couple years since they've been dominating up front. I think Alabama fan is saying, wow, this might be what we've been waiting for. And you say that after they won a national championship with almost two in a row. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, I have an update on Vandy linebacker Charles Wright. He sprained his right ankle. He is in the locker room. They're evaluating it. It's the same ankle that he injured last week. He got x-rays during halftime of last week, but did play the whole second half. I'll let you know as soon as I do if he returns. Also, Oren Burks is back out on the field. He was doing drills on the sideline and looking to get in as soon as possible. It would be great if they got them both back. Nice shades, Al. Very nice. 25-yard line for Vanderbilt to start on offense. Their quarterback, well, it's, it's been rough for him so far. Yeah, two for nine, 11 yards. Had to throw a couple away. Obviously, he got one drop that was a perfect throw, but really good coverage and good pressure the whole game. They got two tight ends in there in an eye backfield. So they will keep it on the ground to Ralph Webb. Trying to wiggle his way outside. Got three, maybe four. As we check in our AT&T field pass, here's Adam Zucker in New York. All right, Brad, and a check on Florida State because of Hurricane Irma. This was their first game back since the season opening loss to Alabama where they lost DeAndre Francois. The defense got fooled here on the shovel pass by NC State. The Wolfpack won by six, and the Knolls are 0-2 for the first time since 1989. Back to you guys. Wow, come into the season number three in the country, lose your starting quarterback, and all of a sudden, you're 0-2. Alabama sub substituting some secondary players in there. Linebacker substitution, keeping everybody fresh. Lassen game knocked down behind the line. Averett, boy, he's a good one. Great in run support, especially. Make yeah, the tackle. Joshua Fraser, number 69, another backup in this football game now. Trying to give the long-range look at this hot day. Keep everybody playing. 
easy to do when you're up 28 to nothing. Yeah, right? exactly. So another third and long. There's been too many of those. Third down and nine. See if Kyle Shermer can hook up with somebody. There's only been one third down conversion in the game so far. Gonna go across the middle and almost intercepted. And again, his receiver had a hand on it at least in Lipscomb. Ronnie Harrison almost had his second pick of the day. Uh, Anthony Aver, number 28, again in great coverage. Ooh, maybe holding. Great holding without getting caught. <laughs> great interference without getting and, caught. And, and a good throw. You can't throw it any better than that. You tell your receiver to get open, and if they're not going to call it, that's what's going to happen. That's Trayvon Diggs back at his own 40. So far, nothing really to return. The rugby kick has kept him neutralized. Loy. Kick again. They drop this one. Let's see. Diggs trying to dig back in there. I think Trayvon Diggs was dying to make a play, don't you think? I mean, he did not call fair catch. He kept looking and looking, and then he drops the ball. His teammate helped him out, though. He did not signal Derek, fair catch. He wanted to run it. Derek Keep is the guy that got on top of it and saved his teammate from a little bit of embarrassment there. Bama with a four-touchdown lead when we come back. Adam Zucker in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I get you caught up on today's action, including Tennessee not having the easy day many might have expected. Quentin Dormany, the late first-half touchdown. They hold on 17-13 against winless UMass. Now back to Nashville. All right, Adam, thanks. See you guys at halftime. Seven and a half from now, 28 to nothing. I don't know who's more impressive, the running backs or the offensive line so far. That's one of those things where I'll let you choose first, and I'm happy after you go because if you're choosing up sides, it really doesn't matter whether you choose both Scarborough or Damian Harris. Both of them practically look the same. Both could get into the second level, and obviously all four touchdowns have been scored by the running backs in this game. He came in averaging 239 yards a game. He might end up with I saw, more than that halftime. Yeah, I saw last week where Nick Saban, he said, I, I really think that Bo Scarborough looked as good as he's looked all year in that game last week. He looked darn good today. They fake it to Harris. Pitch and go. Hurts. Fires. Yeah. Incomplete. Well, I really thought that ball was going to go deep that time. They had it. They were trying to go deep. They were going to go stutter to the outside. And I, I think you got to let this ball go and let it fly. Here's the stutter is going to happen right out to the top. Watch him stop and go. Throw Ooh, it. Man. Throw it. Just throw it. You are so right. A little frustration at that time from Henry Ruggs. The true freshman, he knew he had it. He was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Robert Foster in motion. And he's going to keep motioning. Because he doesn't know what to do. He wants to get close to the bench so they can tell him. He finally sets up up there on the top of your screen. It's on the ground anyway to Harris. And he's still going. Yeah, they whistle, the whistle, yeah, but yeah. I don't think his knee was ever down, but the whistle stopped him. And the fans, Vanderbilt fans that are probably outnumbered here today are booing that one. Well, actually, the, the Alabama fans are the one booing that one. Takes a hit, spins around. The officials assume that he's down, and obviously he was not. Now you get another reaction from the Tide fans that are here because he was never down. The whistle stops. That one brings up a third it down. It is a and bit four. confusing. The away crowd is dominating the, all the calls. Oh, that's here. exactly right. Here's Hertz. And he's not going to get there. A yard and a half shy. This is the reason I was talking about the booing because those are the fans that are booing that play where Harris wasn't down. That's how much crimson there is in this building. I don't know how long ago they bought season tickets for Vanderbilt to come to this game. But <laughs> it's it's more than 60 percent. Don't you think it's I close think so. to 70 percent maybe? Yeah. I had something Derek Mason is the only way you can turn that around is win. You got to win and you got to get those fans dying to buy that ticket. Well they finally forced a punt. What do you get another old American? 
Clark in the punt. And this one will go out around the 23 or 24 yard line. Well, next Saturday, the best game from the best conference. We will travel to Knoxville, Neyland Stadium, 11th ranked Georgia, making a call on the volunteers. Coverage starts State Farm College football today at 3 Eastern on CBS. It all begins. State Farm, 3 o'clock. Zook and the guys will lead us up to kickoff in front of about 103,000 in Knoxville. All right, here comes the Vandy offense. Let's see if they can get something going before halftime, which the is only, just under six minutes the away. The only success they've had in anybody even a little bit open has been the tight ends. It seems like the wide receivers cannot find any space. Now Shermer throws, and again he hits a receiver who doesn't hang on to it, and that yeah. one's Webb. Pretty well thrown ball. Yeah. Ralph Webb has to come up with that that catch. One of the things he wanted to work on this year as he came back for a, his senior year of football is to be a better pass receiver. Talk to Andy Ludwig. He said, I'm going to put you all over the formations. I'm going to get you to be a better receiver. Drop that one. He only had three catches coming in, but one of them was a big one that went for a touchdown of 73 yards. Shermer now with Lassen game and Webb flanking him in the shotgun. Fires, nice throw in the middle. Shearfield holds on to that one. I tell you, you got to be courageous to play quarterback against Alabama. Sean Evans, number 32, is finally healthy. One of those rushing defensive ends that gets right into Shermer's face as he lets it go and he delivers a strike. Here's third down one more time. One for five in the game, and it's a third and medium. They got a chance. Slant is too far in front of the intended receiver, C.J. Duncan. And you see the frustration on the face of Kyle Shermer. They're I think have to kick again. I think Mika Fitzpatrick that time kind of spooked Kyle Shermer. He saw him out of the right side of his eye, his peripheral vision, and he kind of, I think it's Fitzpatrick that puts the pressure on inside. Yes, it is. And watch, he sees him and kind of falls away at yeah. the same time. Didn't make a very accurate throw. That should have been a first down. Fitzpatrick's good enough without coming clean yes. like that and not getting yes. touched. Sam Lloyd, another punt. Trayvon Diggs dropped the last one. He won't try it this time. Fair catch at the 25-yard line with just over five remaining. Five minutes away from Adam Rick and BJ and the Geico halftime reports. Check all the scores and highlights from earlier games. There was a wild one at Jerry's World today between Texas A&M and Arkansas. Here, not so wild, unless you're an Alabama fan, and it's pretty cool, I guess. 28 to nothing. I'll tell you, when you, you watched Vanderbilt on tape and you see the number of upperclassmen who played so much football, you say, why not? Why can't you play with Alabama? Well, today, it's been great Alabama football and a little bit of stage fright, I think, for Vanderbilt. Hurts scanning the field. Look at the protection. Now he's running out of it. It just glides away from the rushers. And he's going to get, if not a first down, close to it. Do you think he even breaks a sweat? I was going to say, he, he looks like he's on air or on I a know. skateboard or I something mean, back there. I mean, he, and that's how he looked at the national championship game, too. I remember watching the game, and he seems unfazed by it. <laughs> he's, he's one cool cat, that's yes, for sure. Yes, he is, and, and very talented as well. Made that look so easy after the rush almost got to him. Now on first down, he'll throw out the flat. Scarborough only got about a yard out of that. Uh, one of the goals that Brian Dable told me was, can we get Jalen using the whole field to throw the football? We want all of our weapons to be a threat to these defenses as we go into this football season. For us to be the best team we can be, we have to make the defense defend everyone. It looks like they're on the right path. Those throws over the middle right on target. See if he throws on second and eight. Nope, not the way the ground game's been going. And here goes Scarborough again to midfield and more. The pile ends up at about the 46-yard line. 
Well, I tell you, that Vanderbilt offensive line, and you look at Bozeman, number 75, coming around. Bradley Bozeman gets the big block. And you get Bo Scarborough into that second level. That is scary. Nigel Harris, number 22, I think, is in the game. For the first time on first down. This one's high. It was tipped at the line. I think Jonathan Wynn might have gotten a hand on it. I think you're right. Najee Harris is a really good receiving back. He's a true freshman, and he's not a little guy either. Goes 220 pounds. Watch Wynn get his hand on it, anticipates the throw, and defends it. Haven't been many long yardage situations today for Alabama. Second and, and ten. They've been dominating first down. Here's Harris. Najee Harris cuts back. Good run. It'll be about two yards shy of the first down. Andre Mintz made the tackle, and we're down under four minutes. Hey, if you want to watch someone play some football, watch number 75, Bradley Bozeman, the, the, the center. He's up against a, a couple of veteran players in the middle, Woods and Leilau, and he is handling them. Harris, first down, diving forward. So the third, well, actually the fourth tailback, if you want to actually look at him, the depth chart. He picks up the first down. Got to love the confidence of a Najee Harris to come in and play here when you got three great players ahead of you already. I'll bet you every team in college football tried to recruit negatively against Alabama about that depth at running back. And he took on the challenge, said, oh, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm pretty good. Right. A couple of those guys will leave early. Yes. <laughs> he lines up next to Hertz and will get the call. Blasted off the left side, ran over two guys, and a first down near the 20. That's what I said. He's not a little guy. Caleb Pierre, number nine, comes up, but I think that's who he ran over. Goes to the left side, and it is Pierre, number nine, right over. First down at the 21. Najee stays in there. They fake it to him, quick slant, a little bit low, incomplete, intended for Camp Sims. When you got those backs, play action is <laughs> so good. That time it didn't work, but. And, and you know if you're, you know, Derek Mason, the defensive coordinator, calls the defenses, you know he's sitting there thinking, they're gonna do it any second here. They're gonna, they're gonna go play action pass. I gotta be ready for it. And then they just keep pounding. Tight end in motion sets up. Second down and 10 at the 21. Hurts slant. This time it's right on the money to Ridley. Good throw. Well, Calvin Ridley a year ago did not get as many targets as maybe he wanted. Never said a word. You know, team's winning, but you know he felt he could do more to help the team. Well, two years ago, he caught 89 balls for over 1,000 yards. Last year, 72 for 769. He's a big timer. Keeps moving up on the Alabama receiving charts all time. Unless the Commodores can come up with a stop here, we might be looking down at a 35 to nothing halftime. Well, I know Derek Mason would never admit this, Brad, but right now he has to think big picture about his football team, too. He's got to survive this game. It could get ugly. It is ugly. He has to say, we got two more rough ones coming up the yeah. next two games, and we got to play long term right now. We got to think long range. First and goal for Alabama again, this time at the Commodore 9. I think they're at Florida next week. Play fake. Lob too far high. Ridley's looking for a flag. Well, he did get grabbed. There's no doubt about it. Jawan Williams was a guy covering. Derek Mason said Jawan Williams is a great cover corner, great size out there. And pretty good hands. He got away with one here, didn't he? Watch, Ridley gets inside, reaches out, grabs the jersey, and then runs in front of him. See if they go back to the ground game. Second down, a goal at the nine. They've been grinding it out all game. Harris, Najee Harris to the three. 
Alvin Ridley, the intended receiver on that previous play, I was talking about the company he's joining as far as all-time receiving annuals. And there's the numbers. Third, fourth, fourth, and fifth. Yeah. And some of those names ahead of them are pretty good players. Yeah, not bad. Amari <laughs> Cooper and Ozzie Newsom and some other guys. Now, here's the problem if you're Vanderbilt. You're doing all this defending, and the quarterback might keep this one. Watch for Hurts. It's been two by each tailback so far. Third and goal here. Hurts going to loft it to the corner, one-hopped it to Najee Harris. That wasn't a good throw. Peart was putting on some pressure. Yeah, Caleb Peart right in his face. Might have been a hot throw. Had to get rid of it, and he bounced it. Good throw would have been a touchdown. So for the first time today, a field goal unit comes out. And that'll mean Andy Papanastis, who hit a couple of them from outside of 40 yards last week. So this should be a chip shot. We said that a few times last week, too. Yes. Florida, that didn't work out so well. 22-yard attempt. And Papanastis is perfect at the 118 mark. 31 to nothing. Coach Mason wondering what are we going to do in the second half. Too bad that for three or four weeks in a row we've had to talk about Amazing. the hurricanes and the disaster everywhere. And now it's our friends in Puerto Rico. Please help those affected by disasters. Visit redcoss.org for more information. Well, Bandy has a little over a minute to work with. But so far, the previous 29 minutes haven't really done him any good so far either. This one's returnable, though, from the one-yard line. Lipskin trying to muster something on special teams, and it's just not there. Now some quarterback news this week. Felipe Franks got a nice trophy from history professor after the Hail Mary that beat Tennessee, the game we had. It's a nice trophy. Not such a good day for Sean White, dismissed from the football team. After a public intoxication arrest, Jacob Eason's back practicing with Georgia. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting story right there, isn't it? Jake yep. Fromm has done a great job. Team looks like they're on a bit of a roll. They go to Tennessee next week. We'll be there. That'll be very interesting. They've got an interesting game tonight between the hedges of Mississippi State. Yes. I don't think he's ready this week to play. Last in game, got a couple. Sean Deion Hamilton went on the stop, and we're down to a minute. And I think it's just regrouping time. Oh, I don't blame him. Yeah. You know, this is time to get in line. Already the plays for the defense in this game. Alabama has run 48 plays to Vanderbilt's 24. Twice as many plays. And almost every one of them's worked. Yes. Every one of them has been physical, too. It'll be blasting game again for two or three more. And that might just about do it for the half. And Isaiah Bug says, all right, guys, that's a pretty good half, a shutout half. Just imagine putting three and a half years of work to get into this game. You're feeling great about your veteran team that, you know, you've trained for two years to get to this game. And then you look up at the scoreboard, and it's 31 nothing and a half. Just imagine that. And you know he's going to tell those guys we can't quit. But certainly it was all Alabama in half number one. There's even more spring in the step of the tide as they head to their locker room than there is for the Commodores, who are in a hole of 31 zip right now. For Alley's halftime interview with Coach Mason, go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. 31 rock here in Nashville as we go to Adam Zucker and the guys in our New York studio. Zuck. All right, thanks, Brad. Can't imagine Coach Mason's too happy. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick BJ and I will show you how Texas A&M prevailed in OT and how FSU was KO'd by NC State after this word from your local station. Back at Vanderbilt Stadium to start the third quarter, and it's been all Crimson Tide of Alabama in the first half, 31 to nothing. Only stopped once and forced to kick a 22-yard field goal, but Jalen Hurts has led the way at the quarterback spot. Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough have each scored two touchdowns and 
To make matters worse, Alabama will get the football first. To make matters worse for the Commodores, that is, to start the second half. Swan's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce with you. First half, we've got our Blazers back on just to cover the sweat marks on our shirts. And the only thing hotter than the temperature has been Alabama's team. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to ask me, so I wasn't <laughs> waiting. Here you you know, was, yeah. I don't know what to say. Sometimes you get in a game like this, you know, I mean, I, I really think Ronnie Harrison ran off the field at the end of the first half and was pointing to the Vanderbilt crowd. I'm telling you, that, those we want Bama shouts awoke up this Alabama yeah. team and they're ready for this game. Now I don't know if Vandy would have been good enough anyway, but they're sure getting a good Alabama team in this football game. I think the tide is giving notice to the rest of the conference too. Don't mess with us. Damian Harris, a nice cutback. This is the way he started the game and this is the way he starts the third quarter. Well over 100 yards on the ground and 15 more on that one. You know, I had a thought during halftime that the Seattle Seahawks are in town, right? They're at our Play hotel. The Titans. Yeah. And I think I just uh, could see Russell Wilson and ben laying around watching and going, <laughs> I'll take that offensive line. Absolutely. So one play, one first down. They fake the jet oh, sweep. Man. They give it what to Harrison play. down across the field. He goes another big run. He's heading to a 200-yard day, the way yeah, things are going such right a now. Pretty, as you said, fake to check sweep. And then Irv Smith, number 82, is going to get out in front of it. Watch this. And then he rolls it in. Good block by Lester Cotton, number 66. That's just pretty running attack right there. That's vintage, you know, Alabama from four or five years ago. Now, listen, Lane Kiffin did a great job with a young quarterback. But I think the emphasis has been, let's get back where we challenge the offensive line to block, not finesse. Bo Scarborough takes his spot, and he does the same thing. And I think it goes all the way back to that national championship game. We need to find a way to use our running backs when we have to run the ball. Jalen Hurts, obviously. You go through a season as a true freshman quarterback, you're going to get better. And can you pressure the other team's quarterback? That might be the number one question coming into this season for Alabama. Scabro gets the handoff again. Stays on his feet, but only got a couple of yards. Damian Harris has a career high already in this game, and we still have a long way to go. This has been the story all game of what these Vanderbilt linebackers have been looking at. Lock down on the right side, pull the backside guard and meet him. Get a mouthful of helmet every play, and they've been making positive gains nearly every running attempt. How about Harris per carry average, 13 and a half? <laughs> well, that'll do it. That's wow. like a, I'd like to have that average throwing the ball. Hey, absolutely. Third down at three. Jalen Hurts scans the defense. They bring an extra rusher. He's going to lob it over the middle. Complete first down. Calvin Ridley. You know, Vanderbilt's had 10 sacks so far in this season. When Derek Mason was at Stanford, he was a sacking machine. But you look right there, there's the guys that are providing that pocket. You see him and the ability to step up in that pocket and wait for that crossing route to come over the middle. Another attack of the middle of the field because of the protection. Now the quick throw. Oh, and he was too ready. Scored. Yep. He was too ready to go. <laughs> Forgot the football. Pretty sure that would have been a touchdown. Or very well, close well, to so it. did he think it was going to be a touchdown. Puts it right on the running back. Don't want to lead him too much. He's wide open. And look at Bo. Bo's ready to go. Forgot the ball. Well, brings up second down at 10. Harris comes back in. That end hinges. Sets up on the right side and then comes back to block the other way. First time that Hurts has been flushed out of the pocket. Look what he does with it. Jalen Hurts down the sideline. And he's got it first and goal, Alabama. Well, if you don't get the football, you have to do something without the football. Damian Harris is very patient and gets that last block to the outside that springs him. And that guy in the broken field, no matter who he plays with, is dangerous. And again, as Brad said, it looks like he's running on air. Yeah. Yeah, there's effortless running. 22 yards that time. And now Harris will power his way in. Another touchdown, his third of the day.
Vanderbilt tried to substitute, never got set. Alabama snaps the ball. Look at they're still moving on the play. Caleb Peart, number nine, is still trying to get lined up when Alabama snaps the ball. That happened, day. that happened fast, didn't it? It did. Eight plays <laughs> seemed like a snap of the finger. Extra point is good. You know, uh, Nesson, I think in 2014, we did Alabama, Texas A&M, and it was 59 nothing. This seems a lot similar to that game. I hope you're wrong, my friend. <laughs> 75 yards and eight plays. Hurts got him close. Harris got him in. 38 zip Alabama. Thirty-eight to nothing, Alabama. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, I talked to both coaches at the half, and Coach Mason said, "Listen, the second half is about respect. It's about getting back to playing football and taking it one play at a time." Fittingly enough, Coach Saban said the second half is all about getting out to a fast start. I'd say they did pretty good on that. <laughs> he said the challenge will be ignoring the scoreboard and making sure that we're never satisfied in the second half. Now they certainly did it in a hurry. Under three minutes to go, seventy-five yards last time. J.K. Scott to kick, C.J. Duncan and Jamari Wakefield wait on the other end. And they're going to bring it out. A little hesitation by Wakefield. And he shouldn't have brought it out, that is. Didn't get to the 20-yard line. Well, let's salute Brian Dable, the new offensive coordinator. What a nice package he's put together. It has a totally different feel from what... The Alabama offense has been the last couple of years. No more jet sweeps, a little bit more power, less finesse. I mean, can't argue with the stats they've had the last few years, but it is a different look. You can basically say he's the third offensive coordinator in the last six games, right? Right. right. Lane Kiffin, Steve Sarkeesian, and, and now Brian. Kyle Shermer's had a tough day and on a bootleg play action. He's getting some heat, but he did deliver it. Maybe a yard gain for C.J. Duncan. And he got tattooed out of bounds by Jamie Mosley. How about Mosley? He's a guy that was a walk-on. His brother was a star, and he just kept getting better and better and better. And now he's starting. Brother C.J. Mosley now plays for the Ravens. One of the, the elite players that have ever come through Alabama. Big smile on his face. Uh, he dropped the receiver after a one-yard gain. Ralph oh, Webb. man. You know, we get a depth chart before we do a game, right? And we get it, what, what Monday night or Tuesday? Yeah. And Alabama's depth chart goes three deep. And then you go, you look at the number three guy, and it's a four or five star guy. I think we're going to see the whole depth chart here, don't you? I think we will. Did you work on your depth chart for this game? I got Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> third down and seven. One for six today on third down conversions. Pressure coming off the corner. Shermer just got rid of it, but he got hammered from behind. Anthony Jennings. Or was it Mac Wilson? It came around 30 that time, yes. Boy, I'll tell you, that's the thing with the injuries that you couldn't get as much of as before, right? I mean, you lose five outside linebackers, and then you lose the two guys you had to the NFL, and all of a sudden you go, uh-oh, we've got other guys when they're healthy. In Alabama's case, it's just that you haven't heard about them yet. Some of these guys, anyway, yep. and you will. Sam Lowe at a punt. Saw a little bit of Mac Williams on the special teams last year. Now we're seeing a little more of them. Fair catch taken this time by Ruggs. Back around the 32-yard line. Just four minutes in to the third quarter. Frustration on the face of the Vandy coach. Joy on the face of Damian Harris. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Napa. New York Life. Chick-fil-A. And by Wheels Up. House of Cash, Johnny, and his museum. One of the many greats that this city has seen over the years. In Music City in Nashville. Like Minnie Pearl. Remember that howdy? George Jones, Tammy Wynette, Dolly Parton, Vince Gill. Vince goes to all of Vanderbilt basketball games. Garth Brooks, little Jimmy Dickens, Keith Urban for the new wave. 
That was part of the Music Row Happy Hour. On the highway, there's our man Jason Aldean, Buzz Brainerd, and J.R. Schumann, and my friends. Oh, there's there the next go. band that's coming out. There we are. We call that the Highway Find on the Highway Radio <laughs> Station, and they found us. And they also found Jay Allen, who I met last night. He's going to be a superstar. Ellie looked good there. She, she could be a awesome. lead singer. Yeah. Here's the throw. New quarterback in. And now we got a freshman to a freshman. Yeah, that's not bad, too. It's like a little by Loa. Uh, highly recruited quarterback. A little bit of a lefty, huh? Yep. A little bit different look. All passer. But not the runner that uh, Jalen Hurts is. Gosh, Jacobs in the backfield. Nagabaloa throws complete. Well, he got that one out there in a hurry to Ridley. And he's got a lot of young freshman receivers that he can go to, too. Ridley still in the game, but we could see Judy as you look at uh, Jalen Jalen can Hurts. take the rest of the day off, yes. I think. He he, I'm telling you, he doesn't sweat. <laughs> <laughs> he runs on air and he doesn't sweat. Unbelievable. Tango going deep. Oh, yeah. Ridley had it in his hands, couldn't hold it. Good looking ball. Juan Williams is right at him. Good throw. Tucks him just a bit. Ridley tries to shield him with his backside slowing down and catching it over his shoulder. And Williams gets his hand on the ball at the last second. If indeed Jalen Hurts is done, there's what he did today. So efficient. The ground game has been smashing. Another one out to the 50-yard line by Josh Jacobs. We might have seen the last of Damian Harris. And Bo Scarborough, too. We'll have to wait and see. Talking to Nick Saban about his quarterback situation. He said, actually, I feel better about it this year than last year. That's pretty good when you got a sophomore and a freshman. Yep. Here's Jacobs running into the secondary. Going into the season, Jacobs was really expecting a lot of big things from him. He's a little more explosive, more of a scat back, more like a Kenyon Drake type player. Getting into the second level and battled injuries just a bit, but now it looks as healthy as can be. Gary, we said a little while ago it might be a 500-yard rushing game for Alabama, the way this thing's going. How about 340 right now? Good Two uh, throws it out to Harris. How about that for the young quarterback, huh? Gets pressure off the edge, gets rid of it right away. That really discourages a blitzing team. When you can read that hot to the running back, the defensive coordinator notices that and does not like to do it anymore. Second down, going to throw again. Maybe. Now rolling the other way and throws it out of bounds. Kyle Shermer's in the Vanderbilt tent, which has been used too much today. I think he got one in the kidneys or something. I saw him holding his back after that hit by Wilson. Well, you know what? I actually think it might have been a kick to the head as it came around. I wonder if his own lineman hit him in the head as Mac Wilson brought him down. Right now, three freshman receivers out there for Alabama. What a great luxury. I know. Three, two four-stars and a five-star, by the way. Blitz coming from Vanderbilt. Tango oh, what, uh, what a rope he throws, and it's a touchdown. Jerry Judy, the other freshman on the other end. What a throw. Boy. He's been accurate on every throw. Nick wasn't kidding when he said he's got a nice arm. Man, does he? <laughs> Talk about Loa felt the pressure, but stood right in there and delivered it. He could feel it coming from his right side, but look at that throw right on it. Man. Another oh, Alabama well touchdown. Rich players there, huh? Mm hmm. Whew. Another one of those drives. That it seemed like it just started, but it ended quickly. Less than two minutes. Extra point up and good. Well, you take out a sophomore who's the SEC freshman of the year and the SEC offensive player of the year. Then you put in the freshman. He rips one 34 yards for a touchdown and then meets his teammate on the sideline. Nice touch. Tango Aloha, freshman quarterback with a rope on this last touchdown for Alabama. Yeah, watch this. True freshman. Najee Harris, true freshman. Watch him get a clean block. He searches around the pocket to find someone. Allows Tugvaloa to step up and watch the perfect throw to another true freshman. Three of them on that play. Tailback of freshman, quarterback of freshman, three wideouts all freshmen on that play. 
Talking they about having right. a luxury. They should be all right, right? I think so. <laughs> they look pretty good. And we don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to be Kyle Shermer, a quarterback, and, either. And, and I can tell you that Alabama defense right now is thinking shut up. They're, they're not even at all thinking that I want a rest. They might get a rest, but they're not thinking about it. They want a shutout. They gave up two late touchdowns against Colorado State when they pulled the starters. I don't think they want to come out. Again, let's take you back to Kyle Shermer's last play of that previous series before the Alabama touchdown. Yeah, and I do think it was Devin Cochran, number 77, gets pushed back. And I think it's his left leg that hits him in the head, back of the head. Allie's got more, I think. Gary, you're right. It was his left hip, and he, he definitely was showing some pain as they felt around in there, but now he's out of the tent, and he's cleared to return. In the meantime, Deuce Wallace will come in to play quarterback, at least for this snap. Actually, Randall Wayne Wallace, the second. Kyle Schrader's a tough guy, isn't he? He sure is. <laughs> oh, man. Lasting game got nothing. Deshaun Hand who had a fumble recovery in the first half, stops him for no gain, or very little. You know, if you, if you circle what Vanderbilt needs to do, like, okay, what could be a game plan for Aunt Vanderbilt to play a good football game? The first thing I got wrote down is don't help Bama. That hurt right at the start of the game. Yeah. And then from there, they couldn't stop. They could not match up in the offense and defensive line. You can take all of the strategy away. If you can't match up physically inside, the rest of it doesn't matter. And I don't think they have. As you see, Wallace has thrown seven passes this year. He's going to try one. And threw a beauty, but dropped again. C.J. Duncan. The coverage was good, but the ball was catchable. Levi Wallace made the play defensively. That's a good ball here. Sure is. It's about the third drop. Well defended, though. I mean, it had to be perfect. Yeah. I mean, you can't do much better that with the throw, and the, the, the defense was right on. They haven't been in Alabama territory yet. They've been anchored on their own end of the field. Third and ten. Another good throw. This one's caught. Oh. And then hammered is... Donovan Tennyson by Anthony Avert. That time Alabama played good, sound, third down and long defense. Make it happen in front of you, come up and make the tackle. This might be the busiest Sam Loy has been in his entire life, yep. the putter for Vanderbilt. Henry Ruggs, another true freshman, is the return man again. Take a shot at this one, bobble it a little bit, and now Ruggs gets it out across the 40-yard line. Nifty return. He's still running. And I don't know if there was a whistle. Maybe he whistle. didn't go down. And they're not going to make the officials the quick whistle like they did last time, are they? They're going to let the replay officials sort it out. Did he go down? There's yes, he's down he's right down. there. Well, they got it backwards. Ruggs just wanted to run some. Yes. Get a workout in. The yard line where it will be first and ten. Henry right there thought he could kind of pull it a fast one. Yeah, it was Everybody close. stopped. I don't know if he heard a whistle. Keep going. At any rate, it's coming back. Still a nice return. Nick Saban talking with us yesterday and his team out to a 45 to nothing lead. Radio booth 45 to nothing is our score and got a moment here check our half -lack. trivia question half -lack. why is the year 1911 significant to the SEC this week 
Yeah, we waited 106 years for that question. <laughs> so we'll see what the answer is a little later. Fern had that one in his pocket all that time, too. <laughs> he, he wanted that 20 years ago. <laughs> Another play inside. Uh, no plays inside Alabama territory. Alabama's had millions inside Vanderbilt's end of the field. Well for running backs. Look at this kid. Najee Harris just taking guys with him. Ryan White finally brought him down. Starting to substitute in the offensive line, this time still running the other way. Chedrick Willis coming in right tackled next to Lester Cotton, number 66, but they're still running left. And now Harris will flush out of the backfield. Nagabalo with the throw, got it to Foster. He's crossing the field and giving ground to try to make some up, and that won't work. And the ball came out. He might have been down, but Harris, uh, not Harris, rather, Herb Smith covered it, and they are going to say it was a fumble, apparently, if they spot it there anyway. Well, he'd like that call by Brian Dable that time. Getting it to Robert Foster has not really got the football in the game, working hard, blocking downfield, doing a lot of stuff. You got to continue to move the ball around your receivers and talent. It's a long season. You got to use them all. Two is going to keep this one. Maybe he isn't a big runner, but he is here. Down inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Now put that one on tape for all of the defensive coordinators that may face to a later is he runs the zone keep as well doesn't look quite as smooth but very efficient but who does right? that's right <laughs> who can run on air like and, hurts and the way he throws the ball he doesn't have to be that smooth does absolutely he? just under six minutes another first down alabama scanning the field he had all kinds of time and now he's running out of it he's still going to rip it downfield touchdown oh, alabama man. Devontae Smith. Looked like Steve Young there for a second. This guy's the backup quarterback. Remember that. Every freshman getting in and on the act. My, oh my. <laughs> Well, at this point, you can only marvel at the talent on the Alabama team. And remember, he, he signed up knowing that Hertz was going to be here for two or three more years, right? Yep. Papanastis with the extra point. Gary said a little while ago, remember the A&M game, 59 to nothing. We're getting close. Yes, and he keeps his wits about him as he goes up in the pocket, sees it, and lets it go to the outside. Boy, I thought for sure he was sacked. And Jalen Hurts on the sideline goes... What a play. 58 yard drive in four plays. Another Alabama touchdown. A happy Alabama sideline, to say the least. Tango Valoa, uh, another touchdown pass, 52 to nothing. I think uh, Alabama was a little upset also with the fact that this last week the talking point has been Clemson is moving past Alabama for number one. <laughs> this kick, we'll take a knee. Let's take a look at the freshman quarterback. You know, Trey heard in number 31, had two shots at him, one right there, and then he couldn't get back to him fast enough before he lets the ball go. And then he took a shot from two guys, but he, he just ripped it to the end zone. And he knew it as soon as he let it go, and the first guy to hug him, Jalen Hurts says, Man, that even impressed me. <laughs> and I'm pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> the whole world won. I mean, you know, think about that. And Deuce completes it to Tennyson. Question to be when the weekend's over. Depending on how the Titans play against the Seahawks, who's the best Hawaiian quarterback we saw this weekend in Nashville? Will it be <laughs> Marcus oh Tuyas? I mean, uh, uh, the Tennessee Titans, oh, Marcus, Marcus Mariota, Mariota. Yep. or well, he's the guy we're good. seeing here? He's pretty good, isn't he? 
Marcus, that, that Tennessee Titan team is a really interesting football team. Derrick Henry, the Alabama running back, is really coming on for him. This time's been pretty juiced up. Their hockey team was sensational. Titans are playing well. And they had a 3 0 Vandy team until today. So the air kind of went out of this part of it. Incomplete. Well, it was this four game stretch that was coming up the Kansas State, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia game. You know, you know, that was the four games right there. I still say if they can go two and two in those four games, it's going to be a very successful season for them. Coming Florida next and then Georgia. Can they win two out of the four? Florida and Kentucky have an interesting game tonight. That long losing streak by the Wildcats, it goes back to the Reagan administration. And a lot of people think if they can't beat Florida this year, when will they ever? running for his life. Lobs one out there. Fingertip catch by blasting game and then he just gets wrestled out of bounds by Mac Wilson. You know Mac Wilson has Reuben Foster type violence when he gets to the ball carrier. He, he plays physical and fast and he's a serious man. Uh, he was down on kickoffs last year making the big hits and he's one of those guys that loves that contact at the point of attack. Seems like Alabama has a lot of those. Third down, which has been a terrible down today. Still have their, some of their starters in. Minka Fitzpatrick right there, still in the football game. When will they empty the bench? Deuce Wallace in the gun on third down and four. Steps in, throws, and that one's caught about three times by Nathan Marcus. I think he held on to it. A tight end, first down. I, I'm not sure right. he got it. I mean, I, it's, I thought it was incomplete. Alabama's playing their combo defense. Mika Fitzpatrick will allow two players to pass, but he's no. right. Yep, that's an incomplete right. pass. Did a good job catching it after the first bounce, yeah, though. Yeah, it's a nice juggle. Yep. Fitzpatrick is all over the... And another stop. And another punt. Sam Loy. To kick again. Henry Ruggs had... A nice return last time and almost took it all the way, but his knee was down. Let's see if he gets a chance at this one. Nope. Fair catch. Just outside the 10. A little over four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Alabama's got it back. We asked you a little bit earlier the Athlete trivia question why is the year from 1911 significant to the SEC this week? Last year, that Vandy, Mississippi State, and Kentucky were all 3 0 to start the season. Well, one of them is going to be 3 and 1. Mississippi right. State plays Georgia tonight in Athens. Kentucky and Florida get together. So we know a couple of those might go by the boards. We'll see. William Howard Taft. Okay. It really was the storyline of the week, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Those three teams that were winning, they were relevant and. Uh, you know, I, I think captured everyone's attention. I'm sure Kentucky says, if, if we can't beat them now, when can we? Andre Harris, you see that even though this is just a two-yard run, puts his shoulder down, and really it should have been no game. And he's just as strong as the other guys are. As Gary said, 6'2", 227. He brings the same kind of pop that Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough do. None of those guys are small backs. Najee hurdles a couple of defenders, and he's got a first down. And the Alabama fans are going to go crazy over that one. Yes. Which true freshman do you like the best? I'm not sure. <laughs> right? Look at that. I mean, Jordan Griffin wasn't even bending down on that play. Almost got his head taken off. Yes. Ran for almost 8,000 high school yards, including 2,700 plus and 36 touchdowns last year. And as Gary said earlier, that's why everybody in the world wanted him. Everybody in the world wanted all of them. Exactly. Here he is again. And he fights for about three. Bring up second down at seven as we're under the three minute mark. Our Scholar Athlete Award presented by Quicken Loans. Confident on the field and in the classroom. Here's our scholar athletes today by Quicken Loans. Minka Fitzpatrick had a great game. Spent the May break in Costa Rica on a mission trip. Oren Burks got hurt early in this game, but one of the true 
leaders in this community and of this football team. And Brad, the whole second offensive line is now in the football game. Craig Lone's commitment to the investment of our future shown by donating $1,000 to Alabama and Vanderbilt's general scholarship funds and those guys' names. Pretty good luck. Oh, what a throw again, and it's Jerry Judy again up near midfield. Well, we said the second offensive line is in there, and they do a good job. Again, this is a very nice pocket. Watch the room to step up and throw the football. Coming off the slot, throwing the ball over the middle. Look at that pocket to step into. Put it right at the face mask. That's exactly where you want the ball thrown. That was a laser, 24-yard pickup. You know how uh, Jalen runs effortlessly? Tua throws the ball effortlessly, doesn't he? Yeah. Just flies out of his hands. First down from the 49. Ryan Robinson getting in the act. Are you kidding me? There's another freshman. Well, you know, I mean, let's be honest. You don't get a scholarship to Alabama if you're not pretty good, right? <laughs> I mean, they might be a running back this year and a linebacker next year, but the offensive line built a huge hole for him. Scott Lashley right at the number two left tackle. J.C. Hassenauer, number 63. Good job. That is... Uh, a wealth of depth over there. These five guys that have played tailback today, I'm just going to do a quick average math-wise. They're 220 pounds average. Apiece. Absolutely. You know, and the number of plays that this Vanderbilt defense, they're already at 73, and we're in the third quarter. Even diving forward, Ryan Robinson picks about three up. Adam Zucker on New York Studios with a forward update. Adam. All right, Brad, and uh, Gary had mentioned number two, Clemson, ascending the rankings, but it's been a struggle with Boston College. Adam Choice gets in here for a 14-7 lead. They got a big one next week at Virginia Tech, if they are to hold on here. They're not using their second-teamers like Alabama right now. <laughs> We're down to third and fourth team in some cases, especially you know, a tailback. I mean, um, try to put this in a little bit of perspective. Vanderbilt beat a top-20 team last week in Kansas State. Right. First time they've beaten a non-conference top 20 team since 1946. Today they're getting ripped. It'll be the 22nd time that Alabama will beat Vandy in a row. And right now, you know, I know at halftime, and, and, and even if you think it, you're not going to tell anybody publicly. But right now, with this many plays for Vanderbilt, I mean, you have to start thinking about next week. I mean, Alabama's resting their players, and right now, you got Florida coming up next week. You, there's a lot of plays for this team to play. 75 plays in three quarters of a, a football game. And we have played three quarters of this football game that has been dominated, and I mean dominated, by Alabama. Oh, I know they're holding up those four fingers, but I'd rather be on that side if I was holding up my four fingers. 52 to nothing, Alabama. We'll return to Nashville right after this message and a word from your local station. Set to start the fourth quarter. Vanderbilt Stadium, 52 nothing, And, uh, you know, it's one of those days. Mom always said there'd be some of those days, and this is one of them. Don't hang your hat too high, too low. There'll be better days. Just today won't be one of them. Final 15 minutes. Third down at two. And Najee Harris isn't going to make it this time. So nice job by the Vanderbilt defense that's trying not to quit. I mean, they came no, in. No, I don't say that. Well, no, no I don't not at all. Quit. No, I mean, they're just, oh, man. You know, I, Nick told us the other day, you know, we played pretty well against Florida yeah. State. Then you got Fresno State, Colorado State. You said they gave up some late touchdowns to backups. This is total domination today. Well, what's more dominating? A, a team scored 52 points for Vanderbilt, only three first downs in this football game. Three first downs, and they have not crossed midfield in the game. So we're not quite sure what's better, the defense or the offense. That's but I right. know the tailbacks are really, really good, and the offensive line has been spectacular today. Speaking of tailbacks, Najee Harris, who had a hurdle job a little while ago, and now he rumbles out for a big I mean, gain again. Right now, I'm not, I'm not saying anybody's quitting, but look at this hole. I mean, that's... That's at least an eight-yard wide hole right there. This is his second hurdle. He'll be participating on the track team in the 110 hurdles uh, for Alabama. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Najee Harris wow. is going, boy, I'd tougher holes to run through in high school than this. 
In the red zone today, four touchdowns and five trips. They just had that 22 yard field goal and they got stopped just short of a first down. And that would have been a touchdown drive as well. 33 first downs to 35 plays for Vanderbilt. And now it's Brian Robinson, touchdown Alabama. Doesn't matter which tailback you give it to, it's the same result. Well, we've been talking about all the running backs, not Robinson. But look at these blocks on the right side of the line. They were running left a little bit. John Cashner, number 67, out front in front of them and just make it go and turn it up forward. Boy, like they just pick a guy, give the ball to, and they got blocking, don't they? Yep. Kendrick Jones, also number 44, got to tip my hat to him. He just did not give up on that play and kept his man right in front of him. Well, my partner said uh, about an hour or so ago about a 59 to nothing game. We've got a 59 to nothing game, Alabama. Take a look at it. And now Geico. it's time for our Geico game recap. Didn't mean to interrupt the lizard. Geico game repack. Cap. Great running by everybody. Did. Damian Harris. Sorry that my mic's cutting out, folks. That was a 61 yard touchdown run. 441 rushing yards for the tie today. And then you always have Jalen Hurts getting in the act. Throw across the middle, laying down the Hurts for them. Nine out of 17, 126. Been a tough day for the offense. Shermer, one of his first passes tipped and picked off. And the Vanderbilt offense has been anchored in the mud. That fumble didn't help the cause as well. A couple of turnovers today. And then this guy comes in. Tonga Bailoa. Already thrown two touchdown passes. Aloha. Mahala to a. <laughs> what a day. 59 to nothing. I get the feeling. That if they had the band here, they could put some band people in there and they'd be scoring today. Well, the the Vandy... offensive line, I mean, they are blocking and controlling. The backups have come in and done just as good a job. You see it in an exhausted Vanderbilt defense out there. Most rushing yards by a Nick Saban Alabama team. 441. I thought I was kidding earlier when I said they might get 500 yards on the ground, but they might. So Vandy takes a field at 13.26 remaining. Again, Deuce Wallace, the quarterback, after Kyle Schirmer went out to an injury that we hope isn't serious. He'd been so effective through the first three games of the season, and today from that skipped pass that was intercepted, it never got better. Yep. Jamari Wakefield in the backfield. They get the carry. And he's fighting for yardage. Got three, maybe four as we check in with Allie. Hey, got, you know, one of these, the positives for this Vanderbilt team is linebacker Oren Brooks. And we've talked about him all game long. He's been such an active leader, not only on the football field, but also on campus. He started a program called Revamp. And it's to help African-American men on campus to better themselves. Uh, he... His deeds did not go unnoticed. People on campus rallied around him. He was able to delegate some of the roles to the younger guys on campus while he played football. But Commissioner Sankey last year at SEC Media Days even gave great praise to Oren Burks for the efforts that he's made on campus um, to help his fellow students. He said some really, really wonderful things about him. He said our football program presents people today like Oren Burks from Vanderbilt, who I mentioned. He's a two-year starter, an all-SEC candidate, an honor roll student, president-elect of Vanderbilt Student Advisory Committee, a young man not waiting to lead. He's leading now. It's awesome to see somebody using their platform for something greater, guys. Yeah, we enjoyed being with him yesterday. Really sharp young man. He goes into an interview room, and about three minutes in, you go, I'll hire you, right? <laughs> Man, boy, wow. he interviews any for anything. He's going to get the job. Exactly. Wallace, I don't know if that was supposed to be a screen pass, but it was blown up by Alabama. And it's fourth down. So Alabama's going to have an opportunity to continue to roll up yardage. 
We'll assume it's going to be on the ground. This is the ninth Vanderbilt punt. That might be a high for the day around college football. He might cramp up. He has to run every punt, oh, right? Man. He has to run to the right. Watch. Yeah, right there. <laughs> right. He's got a nice leg. He does. Rugs fair catch. And almost impossible to return, right? Yep. 11.45 remaining in Nashville, all Alabama. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. State Farm. Control GX. And by Bud Light. That's what I'm talking about. Spinning the vinyl. There you go. Music City, Nashville. A great city to have fun in, that's for sure. Gary stays very calm, but I spent a little time downtown. Did you? Year. Sure. Don't forget, later in the game, play the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Did I you? heard some of the, our crew <laughs> went to a concert. Yes. You went and uh, visited some friends. Yeah. Right? Some friends from uh, Country Station on the highway here in town. I took uh, George Hill and David Moulton for a little dinner last night. Nice guy. So they could introduce each other. Yeah. They're so far apart in the booth. Yeah, they, they really are. They talk to each other. About 12 feet apart. Stat and Spotter up here helping us all game. On the ground, as I said, it should be. And this is Ronnie Clark. <laughs> Just keep plugging guys in. No gain on that play, though. Some news and notes from around college football. Athletic director fired on Thursday at Nebraska. And a lot of people wonder if that means Mike Riley is next. Clemson lost their kicker at practice. Oh. And they are struggling today a little bit, as Zook said earlier. And uh, Rutgers, things weren't going that great to start with, and now placed on probation for two seasons. Some of the many goings on this week. And then we're talking about Clemson closing in maybe on being the number one team. And as Gary said earlier, maybe Alabama took offense to that a little. <laughs> well, it's going to be hard to afford anybody above them at number one, don't you think, after this performance? You got that right. Ronnie Clark. I mean, their game. backups are number 10. <laughs> <laughs> They're the number four team in the right. NFC South. <laughs> From the brains behind the Big Bang Theory comes a new comedy, Young Sheldon. Series premieres Monday after the Big Bang Theory, only CBS. Well, it's going to be a nice trip back to Tuscaloosa for these guys. Well, they got this is their third different group of offensive linemen. 13 different offensive linemen have played in the game so far. Some schools don't have 13 offensive linemen, do they? Not that they do put out there, that's for sure. Third down of four. Nagavalor. Another oh, nice throw. Dart. I mean, the late Kenny Stabler would be proud of that throw. Yes, he they? would. And another freshman, by the way. That was Major Tennyson who made the catch. I mean, he's got tremendous time to throw the ball, but look where he does present the throw to Tennyson. High to the outside. Decent coverage. Arnold Tarpley's right there. It's a perfect throw. I don't know if he's this accurate every day in practice, but he's been unbelievable in relief of Jalen Hurts. Hurts didn't have to throw much because of the tailbacks and what they've done. 628 yards of offense. This is a Vanderbilt defense who's giving up less than 200 yards total offense per game. So Alabama will go to 4 0. Boston College, I mean, uh, Clemson rather now, stretch the lead by another touchdown. Oklahoma at Baylor tonight. Baylor struggling mightily. And Baker Mayfield playing great. Penn State's at Iowa. USC leading Cal. Oklahoma State trailing TCU 37-24. We yeah, saw them interesting. early in the season. We thought maybe their defense could give Oklahoma State some trouble. And Michigan trailing your alma mater. What a turnaround job there by Coach Braun, huh? Yep. 
By the way, uh, Vanderbilt has substituted a lot of different players in there now. They got mostly second teamers in there. And I think that was a false start by the whole line. Looked like the snap count might have been, or the clap count, I should say. Hardest snap, false <laughs> start, offense number 56. Well, five you, yard penalty. It remains second down. You gotta wonder how many snaps in practice that these, some of these offensive linemen even got. Right. You know, three, four, five. Usually you only go two deep. Usually the first team offense gets. 70% of the snaps, the second team gets 30%, the third team gets practically nothing. At the eight minute mark, trying to use some of that play clock and wind it down before the clap. Ronnie Clark. And we talked about Vandy's schedule a little earlier. Alabama's looks like this. Ole Miss next and at Texas A&M. Texas A&M, an overtime winner today over Arkansas. And then it is Arkansas. Tennessee, their bye weekend on the 28th. Well, you know, I mean, I know Nick Saban, and why wouldn't he bristled at the fact there's, there's a big gulf between Alabama and the rest of the conference. I don't blame him. I mean, obviously, you don't want your team thinking you're that much better than everybody else, but it does seem that if they come up and play even their B game, they're going to be pretty tough to beat in this conference. This one's an A-plus right now. Yes. Adam Zucker in New York with this update from South Carolina. Louisiana Tech at a two-point lead with under a minute to go. Jake Bentley. Look who goes up and gets it. It's Brian Edwards for a 41-yard gain. It sets up the freshman walk-on kicker, Parker White, who is 0 for 4 on the year. He nails it from 31 yards, and South Carolina gets the win 17-16 as we go back to Brad, Gary, and Ali. Wow, big finish for the Gamecocks. Here, the finish will be 7 minutes and 14 seconds from now, mercifully. <laughs> well, I, I will give Alabama credit. They are letting the game clock run down exactly. as long as they can. Yeah. They're using the whole 40 seconds and letting the clock run out. And if they could have running time, they'd use running time. You can see they're working it down inside of 10 seconds. Clap should come about now. And Robinson, big run, stays inbounds. And he's got it down around the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer. Well, I think when you run for over 450 yards, let's go with the big guys, don't you think, this time? That offensive line from left to right, Jonah Williams, Rush Pierce-Baker, Bradley Bozeman had a great game, Lester Cotton and Matt Womack. Those five guys put on a show. Now, the backs did as well. I mean, they look good, but those guys up front. There's the buffet busters right there. You got it. They dominated today. There's Vic Bozeman, number 75. He looks like an offense. Greg Byrne, the athletic director, yes. standing in front of him. A couple yard gain by Ronnie Clark. They actually have Ronnie Clark listed as a tight end <laughs> on the depth chart. Yeah, go give it a try, kid. Yeah, just, <laughs> just hold on to the ball. Inside elbow up. Exactly. That's all you got to remember. It's the I'm quarterbacks gonna... to your right, put that right <laughs> elbow up. <laughs> go for it. That's how you make that pocket. Plus 544 was the previous margin. Today, 573 yard difference. Whew. We'll be down to five and a half minutes, less than five and a half on the snap upcoming. Tango by Lola. Two that, touchdown is passes that the today. First, first huddle they had in the game. Perhaps. It might be. It might be. Let's check in with Allie. 
Hey guys, I was able to talk to Minka Fitzpatrick this week, and he gave me some great insight into this, uh, we could call it a personality test. All the players at Alabama have to take it when they start their careers, they're the freshman year. And that way the coaching staff knows exactly how they learn best. It's a really great tool. And he said, you know what, I actually tested the exact same as Coach Saban. So he knew just how to get to me. He knew how to coach me the right way. He knew how I'd respond to him. He said, I had to learn though, now being a senior and having this young group, how to be a leader to them. And he said, I wasn't great at being both Vocal. I like to lead by example, but I've been really working on my vocal skills. The coach reminds me every day to get better at it. The Saban on the field, huh? Wow. That might be a first down. Ronnie Clark, get another update in New York. Here's Zook. All right, Brad, thank you. Number five, USC and Cal, they were tied at 13, but after the Bears turned it over inside their own five, Sam Darnold goes to Deontay Burnett for his fifth of the year. They've scored 17 straight. Clemson now up 27 to 7 on BC as well. We'll see you on the postgame show. 59 nothing here, Adam. And uh, Trojans from the last 13 meetings against Cal. Sam Donald's pretty good too. It appears Alabama's trying not to score. You think they could stop themselves? They can take all the time they want in between plays here. And Ronnie Clark, Arnold Tarpley made the tackle. Coming up after the game, stay tuned for the CBS Sports Post Game Show, powered by Ram. And Adam and Rick and BJ will bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights, things that are coming up tonight, later. I don't know what they'll say about this game. I'm not even sure what we can say anymore about this game. Here comes the 89th offensive play for Alabama. Straight up the middle, stood up after a yard gain. Cameron Todd and Arnold Tarpley make the tackle. And we'll work our way into three minutes. Well, the question is, did this prideful Vanderbilt team, all these veteran players, remember this is a team of 22 starters, 17 are upperclassmen. Can they regroup? Yeah. I mean, it's a humiliating game for them. Can they regroup and go play Florida next week? I'm sure Coach Mason is going to say it's just one game. Let's put it behind us and let's go forward. But it's a bruise to the ego for right. sure. They were so excited for this game to get the number one team in the country to come in here. And they've, you know, again, worked three years to get to this point. Ronnie Clark again. Clark breaks a tackle, stumbling and diving. Stays in bounds at the three. You can't tell Ronnie Clark not to, you no, know, not take a knee not. or something. So. Right. Good job up front again. I mean, Ronnie, just like everybody else, just wants to play, and he wants to. Coach Saban says when you get the opportunity to play, go play. Well, and he's playing. Wouldn't be surprised now if uh, Alabama takes a knee, to tell you the truth. They could probably take a knee and run out the game. That puts him over 500 yards rushing here yep. on the day. Well, if they take a knee, they're going to say, don't lose too much if you take each a knee in it, because they're 501, right? Yep. Happy offensive coordinator, that's for sure. I, I would say pretty sure they will take a knee. They've got I, sort of a victory set sign lined up there. There's the knee. <laughs> Nick still coaching for the 59 to nothing lead. Now the fans that are virtually 90% Alabama fans left in the stadium. Uh, starting to cheer and finally starting to the actions. They wanted to savor every minute of this. <laughs> They're down to 499 now. I think anybody's calling the bench. <laughs> <laughs> There's a smile. <laughs> Well, what did he say? I, I think they're saying we're at 499, Coach. Garborough's going, Coach, come on. <laughs> and now they lose a couple more. That's all right, fellas. Yep. There'll be other days when you might have 500, but I think the enough is enough, and that's what Coach Saban's doing. 
Well, either way for Vandy, it's an embarrassment. Either they run it in or they take a knee. Either way, it's an embarrassment. So final play coming up. Never like the visiting team to be taking a knee in your mm, stadium. No, not at all. But that's the kind of day it's been. All Alabama, whoops. <laughs> Two almost tripped trying to take a knee. Now they'll walk it off with a shutout win. And for a defensive-minded coach, he loves that. His offense was brilliant as well. And there was no contest today as Alabama goes to 4-0. And, oh, and Vandy drops to 3-1. and one. Conference opener for both teams. And an impressive opening road victory for Alabama. 59 to nothing. We'll be back in Nashville coming up in just a moment. All Alabama 59 to nothing as they remain unbeaten and the number one team in the country. And now it's time for our Napa play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. You'd think maybe it'd be a starter. But when you got a freshman like Tua Tango Baloa, watch this move in the backfield and then watch the throw. A rope to the end zone to another freshman for a touchdown. Eli Gold with the call as well. Here now, a first and ten Alabama. Tua, the left-hander, drops back, looks, has time, steps up, spins away from two men, then throws towards the end zone, wide open, Alabama! Touchdown, Devontae Smith! My goodness gracious! Well called, my friend. <laughs> All Alabama, it'll be a happy trip back to Tuscaloosa. 59 to nothing is the final. Don't forget tonight, NCIS New Orleans, Girl Mind, 48 hours. Next Saturday, we're going to be in Knoxville. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Tennessee Volunteers do battle at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Right now, for Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce, Brad Nestle saying so long. From the Music City, music wasn't pretty for the Commodores today. 59 to nothing, Alabama rolls. College football postgame show powered by Ram is up next after these messages.